Hi teachers, this video is going to walk you through how to take one of those amazing virtual libraries and customize it to your own liking, um, add some things, or even build your own. So I'm going to walk through what you can do. I'm going to be using Jen Elliott's awesome virtual library example. I know that she shared with many of you, and you are welcome to customize what she's done and um, then add that to your Google Classroom. So I'm also going to walk through how best to add that to your Google Classroom. So first, let's start with some basics. Um, Jen has added a background to her virtual library. So I am going to take her virtual library that she created, and I'm going to make my own copy of it. So you're going to need to do this first in order to customize it to your own liking. So we're going to take the entire presentation and I'm just going to now call this, this is Blazes. And I did that by clicking File, Make a Copy. And we'll add it to my Google Templates folder. <clears throat> Okay, so now I have all of my editing tools across the top and I can tweak this in any way that I want. Let's say I was in a position where I wanted to change the background. I could certainly do that um, by clicking to choose an image here and I could do a Google image search for um, floor and wall background. And you'll see I get a whole bunch of different floor and wall backgrounds that I might change this to. So let's find something different, not because we need something, but just for the purpose of showing you how you could change it out. Okay, so I could change it out. Jen's got a lot of awesome different um, props here. So you can go about adding props to your virtual library or changing out props by clicking insert image and we are going to search the web and the big key here when you are searching is you want to write transparent background after whatever you are searching for. So that way when you add something waiting on it when I add something, I don't have that white background around it. So I could add myself a desk chair here. I could add a desk. I could add whatever I want. I can also take out any of these features as well. So that is how you would customize um, your background. The same thing with the bookshelves. So the way that you would search for bookshelves to add your bookshelves would be insert image search from web and then I'd simply want to search for bookshelf transparent background and then you'll see that I get a whole bunch of different options some of them will be floating shelves others will already have books on them so it really depends on what your goal is I can see right here is that same one that Jen is using here so once you have that whole scene set up or you've customized this awesome scene that Jen has created, you're going to want to look at adding your Bitmoji. And if you don't know how to use Bitmoji or you need help setting up Bitmoji, I actually have an assignment in the Let's Get Learning summer classroom available. It is found under the get extras. At the end of this training, I'll show you where to find that material and it'll walk you completely through how to use Bitmojis. So if I want to, I'm obviously not Jen. <laughs> so I'm going to change this out to Mrs. Blazes and then I am going to come up to my Bitmoji icon or my Bitmoji extension and I'm going to find a Bitmoji um, you can find a Bitmoji where you're reading. You might find a Bitmoji where you're sitting. There's actually a great one if you type in the word sit. Um, so I can have myself, I can make myself a little bit smaller here. I can actually sit myself 
in this awesome and very comfortable looking chair. So it's already set up that way. You don't make the Bitmoji sit, it, um, it comes that way. <laughs> so I can, I can tweak my thought bubble or move my thought bubble around so that I can, it can go closer to my head. I might want to click on my thought bubble and make it actually come out of my brain. Looks like it's coming out of my hair at the moment. So I can play around with this. A um, couple of little quick tips and tricks. If you need to resize something and you're not sure how to do it, the best idea for resizing is always to use a corner. And you'll notice what happens if I don't use a corner, I get very funky looking. <laughs> And then I have to play around with the side in order to get myself to look right again. Whereas if I use the corner to drag myself in and out, it keeps that aspect ratio. So you don't, the pictures don't look kind of funky and you don't look funky. So once we have all this, let's talk about the books. So in order to get what you need for the book, first you're going to want to find the cover or image that you want your students um, to see. So if you're using books, obviously you'd want to go out and find that book cover. Now, if I do insert image, search the web, and I happen to love the book Fly Away Home by Eve Funting. That's one of my favorites. So I could search here, but as I look for Fly Away Home by Eve Bunting, I don't find the picture of that book. So if you are looking for the covers of books, I strongly suggest going back out to Google and searching for and then clicking on images here, and you are probably going to find that cover. So when you find that cover, you can simply right click on that cover and copy that image. And you're going to paste that image in your slideshow. So let me go ahead and right click, copy that. Okay, so I have pasted the picture of the book and all I want to do is I want to make it smaller to fit on the shelf. If I want to change out one of the wonderful books that Jen has put here, I would simply click on the one that I want to change out and hit the delete key and it's going to delete that picture altogether. If you accidentally delete, you can do control Z as in zebra to undo what you've just done. So. Let's say we're going to take this one out for the moment. I want to put this book in its place. If I want that nice border that Jen has put around her books, I would come up to my tools on the top and find the border weight line and then simply select. Um, it looks like she has three pixel border, so a 3px border. You can change the color of the border by clicking on the line color and playing around with that. So now I've made it match the color of the others. And so what I'd want to do is I'd want to get a link to the video of this book. Now you can use other sites, but I strongly suggest using YouTube um, only because it's real easy for you to approve those videos so students can access them on Chromebooks. If you use another site, just keep in mind that the site also needs unblocked. Um, so if you were to find a book reading on Vimeo, you're going to need to put in a ticket in order to get those blocked. So let's say I've got my book here. 
Okay, so I happen to have that book. I am now going to do one of two things. I can use the shortcut Control K when I am clicked on the book, or I can right click on the book. And I want to insert a link. We're going to go up to insert. You can also do it here. So if I click on the book cover and I click insert, you'll see that I can use control K or I can click link. And then here I just want to paste the YouTube link where I want students to go and click apply. So keep in mind that this right here will allow you to edit the link. If you need to remove that link, you would click this or if you needed to copy this link for some other reason, you can click the copy button. Students will click on the picture and they will be able to click on the book title in order to watch that video. So the last step is once you have that library all customized to whatever your liking is, you need to prepare it to share with students. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go up to the share button and you want to ensure that you have the share set for anyone at North Olmsted City Schools with this link can view. If you have the sharing set to restricted, students aren't going to be able to view this. So you want it to make sure that it's North Olmsted City Schools. They don't need to edit it. They only need to be viewers. In Google Classroom, we're going to head over there now. And I'm going to just do this in my Let's Get Learning Classroom for the moment. I'm going to click on the classwork and then I want to create and I don't need this to be an assignment unless if I'm asking students to do something with this book room. So I can make this material, but if they're doing something and there's something to turn in, you might want to make this an assignment. So perhaps they are um, have some type of choose a book activity. The big thing to remember here is when I go to grab it from my Google Drive, it should show up in my recents because I've just been playing around with it. Oh, there it is. You want to make sure that you leave this as students can view file. You only want them to be able to look at it. So if I were to go ahead and assign this as students can view file, then students would be able to click on this virtual library and they would be able to click on any of the books. It would send them to the links. They can't modify your virtual library in any way. So hopefully this helps you get started. Have fun with it. There's so much you can do. You can do book titles, but you can also use the virtual Bitmoji classroom to send your students to other web pages or resources. The sky's the limit on this. So have fun. People have done all types of creative things with this. So I'd encourage you to do some Google searching and find out what others have done as well.